What's happening, YouTube? We got a new video for you on a Civivi knife, the budget line from Wii. This is their packaging. It looks almost identical to the Wii, actually. So, And you get a cool pouch, which is always good. This is part of our pass-around group. And this one is the Aquila. I'm saying the Q right. I think that's how you pronounce it. I could be wrong. But I got to tell you, I didn't have a lot of interest in this knife. I like the way it looks. I think it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. But I didn't have a ton of interest in it due to the, some of the things about it. But then I got it in hand, and that's one of those like, oh man, this is a great knife. You know, once you actually get it in hand, use it, uh, have the chance to, to carry it and such. And I'm definitely a big fan of this guy. So before I get into that, though, let's go over the basic specs. Your overall length is 8.3 inches. Your blade length is 3.45 with a cutting edge of 3.15 due to that finger choil here. You've got a blade width of 1 inch. Blade thickness is 0.13, so it's pretty thin. It is VG10 steel. They're running at about 59 to 61. That's pretty interesting. It seems kind of hard for VG10, but I could be wrong there. It's hollow, hollow ground. Um, this one has the black finish. That also comes in just a plain satin. And you have a hand length of 4.85 inches and a um, width, handle thickness of 0.52, so slightly over a half inch. Uh, G10 on this, and then the, the um, weight is 4.1 ounces. It does have stainless steel liners that are anodized a gold color, which is actually really good looking on this knife, I feel, with the black. And they are skeletonized, so they do reduce weight. So it's a pretty good sized knife with that uh, 4.85 inch handle. Um, Let's do some size comparisons while I'm thinking about it. We've got the Paramilitary 2 here. So it's nearly the same size as the Para 2. Notice that it has more cutting edge though. In fact, I would say the Para 2 is actually a larger knife. And it has, it, the Wii has a little bit more, well, it's hard to tell because of the choil. Curious. Actual cutting edge is probably about the same. But this one is a little smaller in the handle. And since I've got it here, the LA Police Gear S35 knife just had to be having to be sitting out here, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, the Wii's a little bit bigger, so that's actually one reason why I wasn't too attracted to this model because of the size. I'm not, I don't carry very big knives anymore. I'm typically around a three, three and a quarter inch blade, four inch handle, kind of is my is my sweet spot. But I got this guy in hand, and I thought, man, this thing is so comfortable. The, one of the most ergonomic handles that I've ever felt in a knife, uh, right here. That's saying a lot. The pair of two has really good ergos. You know what? This is better. It really is. Just feeling that in my hand and feeling this in my hand, the Aguila is better. Um, I would say it's up there with Rick Hinder's um, ergonomics. and He's kind of known for his handle ergonomics. So the handle is very, very well done. Very ergonomic. The, it's a little thicker, 0.51, barely over half inch, so it's just acceptable. But it f just feels so good. It fills the hand. So here's a shot uh, in hand. I have medium-sized gloves, and you can see it's it's a little big. Um, not not big for my hand or anything, but if I were to grip like that, you can see how much um, handle length we have here. When you actually put your thumb here on the um, hump here on the blade with the jimping, where your hand rests is like right there. It's really natural feeling. So you could have a little less handle. Uh, the blade to handle ratio is not the best. I think it's due to this lanyard hole, which I wish they would just kind of round that off and cut the handle by that much, and that would be about perfect. But let's talk about the action. It does ride on ceramic bearings, ceramic detent. It is fantastic. It is a dialed in action for flipping the knife with the flipper, with the middle finger flick, with the hole, and the thumb stud deployment. It literally deploys all three ways pretty much perfectly. That's pretty rare for someone to dial in the action that well. Usually the flipper's too, too uh, the detent's too strong. You know, it's a flipper to use the thumb stud deployment, or not thumb stud, but in this case, the thumb hole. And in this case, it's not. And of course, my furnace wasn't on, and it decides, hey, let's kick on right now. Take a second, just enjoy the beauty of that guy while I, I uh, turn it off real quick. There we go. All right, so that should shut off here in a second. So very good action on this guy. Um, the blade is very good slicer. I'm going to tell you that right now. I, I cut up some strawberries last night for dinner. I've 
used it to slice quite a few different things, and all of a sudden my calipers are missing. Oh, they're there. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's very thin behind the edge, but we're going to find that out here. Nope, we don't want millimeters. There we go. What in the world? That was weird. Point zero two nine. Point zero two six. Just getting a few different measurements here. Point zero two seven. So pretty thin, not as thin as I actually thought it was. Um, the rectifier is one of those ones that's like in the wisp or like stupidly thin on the edge. This one's a little thicker, but not much. But it is a really good slicer. Love the blade shape. I think it's really attractive. The whole aesthetics of the knife to me totally appeal. Totally appealed. I think it's just a really cool looking knife. Some people might not like the gold. I think it looks great with the black G10. I wouldn't like it on any other color though, I don't think. Um, and again, I'm not a huge fan of the liner fold. Now the, to the hardware is all titanium. The pocket clip is titanium, and the pocket clip actually looks a little out of place here. I wish it was analyzed like a black. It's kind of their standard stone wash finish on their pocket clips they do, and it kind of looks a little out of place. That's just one small thing, but the centering and everything is perfect. The blade, no blade play. Really, really solid lockup. There's nice jimping on the liner lock to disengage the lock. I mean, guys, this is a winner. It's a great knife. 68 bucks is what you're paying for this. The quality of the knife they're putting out, no one doubts their quality on their high end, but their low end stuff is really, really good. I mean, it's, I was super impressed. I mean, the Backlash was my favorite knife, I would say, last year under 50 bucks. This one's a little bit more because of the choice of VG, VG10 steel. The new Shard, I believe, is about the same price, which I need to get my hands on one of those. It's a little bit smaller. I think it'll be about perfect for me. And it's D2. So, you know, under 70 bucks from pretty much all their knives. And the quality and fit and finish and the action and everything is, is fantastic. I mean, it's it's knives like this that make me wonder why I spend so much on knives. <laughs> on other knives. I'm dead serious because it's that good of a knife. And it's only $68. This literally could be the best. I mean, it's too early in the year. It's January, for heck's sakes. But this is definitely one of my favorite budget offerings of this year. Now, some people may not consider this budget. It's $68. To them, that might not be a budget knife. To me, that is a budget knife. Really, anything under 100 is a budget knife to me. But some are say under 50. That's why I do those, you know, best nights under 50 videos because a lot of people want to. And that's, those are some of my most popular videos under 50 bucks. So this is a little over 50 bucks. Um, and the choice of steel is not bad. Now, VG10 can be pretty good. If you watch Cedric Canada's channel, he does some awesome edge testing. He has had some pretty impressive results with VG10. So don't write off VG10 at all. It's not a bad steel. It's old steel, yes, but so is D2, and so is a lot of the steels out there. So, But I think the Civivi Aguila is a total winner. Um, great money. I mean, if you, don't, if you like a little bit larger knife, this isn't too big either. I feel like it's about... A little bigger than I like to carry it, but I would totally still carry it and use it, and I have been, just because it's such a fantastic knife. It's got great ergonomics. I wish that the only the other knife that this reminds me of from Wii is the it's the Wii knife Ignition. It's a frame lock, and it also had sported VG10 steel. It's a tight frame lock with a GT, G10 lock. So I did a review on it, and it had the same kind of opening hole and really really similar action. I prefer the liner lock though. Uh, on this knife. I don't know why. I just feel like it, it feels better. And I wouldn't spend that 130 bucks when you can get this for $68. No way. I mean, it's not just because you got titanium on the lock side doesn't mean it's worth spending that double the price. So I think this is a better value and one of the better knives you can get from Civivi and Wii. So, hey right, guys, I think that's going to wrap up my thoughts on this knife. I want to um, thank Wii and Civivi for sending these out to our pass around group. It's greatly appreciated to be able to handle all these new knives. Um, and for the guys that set up the pass-around group, you know, it's 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 an awesome uh, experience to be a part of it. And I've got a couple more coming soon, really soon. The the Wii Roxy will be in my hands pretty soon. Just got shipped out to me. Um, there's a new Hogue knife that we're doing. There's still just going to be quite a few videos coming up um, for those new knives fairly soon on this channel. So keep an eye out. I've also got another Wii that was part of this pass-around that you'll see probably coming up next. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.